Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife and you join me at the end of a fantastic day birding at the North Norfolk coast. Today, I've been at Norfolk Wildlife Trust Clay Marshes Reserve and I've seen some species I've never seen before. So, let me take you through how the day went. Clay Marshes is a great place for wildlife all year round, but in the winter, it's especially good for wintering birds. My day started at Bishop's Hyde, which gives a vantage point over one of several freshwater pools that are managed purposely with wildlife in mind. It didn't take long to see something exciting as a marsh harrier soared into view. This bird with its brown wings and cream head is the typical colour for a female, but with this species there is no guarantee. Marsh harriers are one of only two known species of birds where some males mimic the colourings of females. This bird wasn't alone and was soon joined by another, darker individual. They didn't stay for long and soon disappeared into the reeds, but their presence hadn't gone unnoticed. Hundreds of ducks and waders had taken to the air in the attempt to not become dinner. When things calmed down a bit, I started to take a closer look at some of the species present. These ducks are widgeon and teal, and here's a better look at them. The birds getting onto the bank are widgeon. The males have telltale chocolate and orange heads, but the females are more plainly coloured. The three smaller birds in the foreground are male teal. You might just be able to make out their green eye patches. Out on the pool there are several species of wader. On the left is a lapwing, and on the right is a black and white avocet. You might recognise avocets as they are the emblem for the RSPB and are a real conservation success story, albeit a bit of a happy accident. During World War II, coastal areas of East Anglia were deliberately flooded to defend the UK from potential invasion. This provided a perfect habitat for avocets to breed and they naturally recolonised from Europe. Before this point, they had been absent as a breeding bird for more than a hundred years. Just like so many other waders, they have bills that are especially adapted for their feeding habits. Theirs are upturned, and they use them to swish through the top layer of underwater sediment in search of aquatic invertebrates to eat. And there were some other adapted bills on the pool, those of the UK's largest wader, the Eurasian curlew. Instead of sifting, these use their long down curved bills for probing into the mud and water for crustaceans, worms and insects. They also make a pretty good tool for preening with as well. It was time to move on and towards the next hide. On the way I spotted another flock of curlew feeding on a recently cut stubble field. Their scientific name is Numenius arquata and both of these words relate to the shape of their bill. Numenius comes from the Greek words for new moon and arquata comes from the Latin word for an archery bow. They were very far away so I left them to it and moved on. Well I've just made it to the second hide of the day and I say hide but it's actually three thatched roof huts that give out different vantage points across the marsh here. Straight away just down here I can see some teal and some shell duck a little bit further out and I'm sure there's a myriad of other wading birds out there to have a look at. Well I definitely meant to say myriad, that'll teach me for trying to be fancy. Here are those teal and shell duck I was talking about. At just 360 grams teal are the smallest native duck, whereas shell duck at 1,100 grams are much bigger. Despite their name and appearance, shell duck are more closely related to Egyptian geese than they are to any other ducks in the country. On some grass closer into the hide was this lonesome pink-footed goose. This species spends summer in the Arctic and then migrates in their hundreds of thousands to overwinter at coastal sites in the UK. 
On one of the islands, I saw another lone bird that stood out from the rest. This is a ruff, and this one is a male, but just like with marsh harriers, separating the sexes isn't always easy. Most male ruffs have vibrant markings, which they use to perform displays, and sometimes they fight one another for the chance to mate. This is dangerous work, so some males instead develop the plain colouring of a female and try to go undetected and find a mate that way. On another scrape in one of the pools, I could see a flock of small grey birds hurriedly probing the mud for food. These are Dunlin, a common small wader of UK coastal sites. Some of them seemed to work in formation, moving from one place to another, where a couple didn't seem to have got the memo and were off doing their own thing, like me most of the time. Growing to just 52 grams in weight, they are really quite small, just over half the size of a blackbird and dwarfed by these uninterested lapwings. It was time to move on. Clay Reserve is next to the North Sea and it'd be a shame to come here and not at least see some waves. Plus, I was secretly hoping to see some birds that I've been looking for for a few years now. The sea itself was pretty empty, aside from these two cormorants who stood like gargoyles on some posts sticking out of the water. They stand like this to dry their feathers, although I don't imagine they've picked the best spot for it. Further along the beach there is a windbreak hide pointing inland towards one of the reserve's pools. There are a few different birds here, most of which I've already spoke about, but one which I haven't shown you so far, a male northern pintail. Less than 40 pairs breed in this country, some of them along the Norfolk coast, but this is most likely one of the 29,000 or so European birds that overwinter here. I carried on along the coast and spotted an almost completely white gull. This might look like a lightly coloured juvenile of one of our common gull species, but it's actually a juvenile Iceland gull. Only around 250 of these birds visit the UK every year, and they can be separated from the more common species by their white primary feathers. Many people I spoke to along the beach had came specifically in the hope of seeing this bird but after making myself available to luck, here it was, just 10 metres away, and my luck was about to get a whole lot better. Oh my god, yes! Yes, Fred! Oh. They are. Yes, yes. Oh, yes! Sorry about my excitement and terrible camera work there. I wanted to see snow bunnings for a very long time and here they were, almost within touching distance. These sparrow sized birds are only found in England during the winter. Around 60 pairs nest in Scotland, but when the temperatures drop, 10 to 15,000 that have nested in the Arctic Circle migrate to the north and east coast of England. During this time, they are usually in their winter plumage, but in the summer, they develop a striking black and white colouring. They usually move in small flocks and work their way across the shingle, beaches and dunes in search of seeds and invertebrates. A few people are gathered by this point, so I moved off to give them their turn at seeing these magnificent little birds. From here I worked my way back towards the car park, briefly stopping in one last hide as I passed by. There were quite a few birds out on the pool in front of this hide, including some golden plovers, dunlin and shell duck, and at the time I didn't notice the ring plover to the front left of this shot, which is a shame as I've never filmed them before. The skies above were filled with flocks of dunlin and teal, I have no idea why they do this, there didn't seem to be any predators about for them to avoid and they weren't heading 
in any particular direction. I like to think it's just them enjoying the scenery, but I'm sure they have their reasons. I left the hide and soaked in the beauty of this place one last time. What a day. And that brings us to now. The sun's just going down, the birds are settling into roost, and I have had a brilliant time. If you enjoyed this video, check out this other British wildlife video now and subscribe to the channel for future content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.